As daylight turns to red sky, Kara and Cole are brainstorming ideas on how they can defeat Nauticon. Cole looking out the window and hasn't touched his cake. Okay, here's a crazy one. When Nauticon is cornered, you say your wish. I guess that could work, but he'd be too quick to corner as he can move away. Then how about this? We raise the dead and they can attack Nauticon. That won't work either. You can't wish to do harm. You can't wish for more wishes. You can't wish for love. But that's not how we're in this mess. But what they don't know is that there are a pair of eyes watching them. Kara sees the cake on the window seal and is annoyed. Are you gonna eat that? Cole remembers about the cake. Oh yeah, sorry. I guess I just forgot about it. And he gives it to Carol. Carol eats the cake slowly. I'm not thinking straight. It's not from a lack of food. It's a lack of members. Our friends. Gone. Our world. Torn apart. Look at us. This is all my fault. Carol continues to eat and looks at Cole's sad. And then Carol starts to look curiously at the little robot as he brushes something down the stairs. Cole, I guess we really do end up together, just not the way I envisioned it, Cole said. Stop! I know you don't want to hear it. No! Stop talking! Do you hear that? I don't think we're alone. Cole turns around to see the little robot communicating with another pair of eyes. Then the figure runs downstairs. Both of them go to the top of the stairs and see the figure running downstairs. We're not the only Sorry. We're not the only ones here. It could be a spy. He or she might be trying to inform. Not a sorry. It could be a spy. He or she might be trying to inform Narcon on our whereabouts. They won't be a spy unless we get to know them. Hurry. And the bear both run down to the sea, everything the same as it was. I barricaded the door. No one could have gotten in. We've been here for so long. I think you're starting to see things. Carol sees a lever on the wall and flicks it to reveal a secret passageway. Like how I'm seeing a secret basement in the lighthouse? And then both of them walk into the secret basement to reveal a secret lab. Looks like a bunch of stuff from Zane Spotter's old lab. Then they hear a loud crash as a box full of gears is knocked over. Cole jumps back a little. You were right. We're not alone. Both start to step back from the bookshelf, facing towards them where the noise came from. Then they see the small robot picking up the gears and handing them to the stranger. Whoever you are, come out. Then the figure comes out of hiding. I am Zane, built to protect those who cannot protect themselves. The figure turns out to be a rusty lookalike of their friend Zane. Zane? The rusty robot looks at them in a strange way. Cole breathes a sigh of relief. <sighs> when Zane's father was trapped here, he must have made a replacement Zane. Great! Another knight in rusted armor. Rusted, maybe? But can he still protect? The robot shows off some punches, but then trips over his own feet. Built to protect what? Itself? Who knows? But if the two of us can't make my wish, maybe a new perspective can. And two look at each other with bright smiles. I want to point out something in that story. It is the appearance of Echo Zane. So I have Echo Zane, and he's one of the favorite characters in the season six. I really enjoyed it, and he's appeared on exactly what happens in season six. They made a placement for Zane. Cool. That's it. <laughs> All right, guys, that is the end of the chapter. And I'll see you guys next time. Um, I forgot the outro, but forget the outro. So, guys, bye.